As an artist, you're always asking yourself, is this scene worthy of painting? Is it really worthwhile? Because it is a real commitment to the subject, to the idea that we're trying to portray. It's a super, super spectacular scene. So with that in mind, I have to make sure that that doesn't overwhelm me or actually put me off because I rather love doing small little studies as almost more colour notes and um, sort of stuff to then take back to the studio. But I think that it's not going to paint itself, so I think let's get stuck into it. Okay, this is really the time to uh, look for those big shapes because when we look at the scene, there's so, so many um, boats and things happening can help for the overall painting but especially when we're starting we need to work out the visual importance and for me it's really this the bridge and the dark underneath the bridge that's what's so so important for me to get in i really need to know what's going on with that first value wise shape wise so i've got my little neef stiff synthetic brush there I really do like them as a, a blocking in brush as well, even though the bigger the board, you've got to go for a bigger brush. So now just blasting in these early values. There's actually quite a big car park here, and uh, so it's an unusual shape, but it's a scene that has been painted by many artists over the years, I think going right back to the 1930s. James Jackson was one of the main, and I think he was painting it before the bridge was actually put in. So, just getting these big areas of water in. Always remember to make sure the paint mixes are still fairly thin, because we don't want too many, or too much paint on, too much to change. There's even an argument and I have actually started in my studio work is to actually grab a rag and smudge some areas on like that water instead of using the brush. So we're not thinking about mark or we're not thinking about detail. We're more thinking of just value. So you can see I'm now juxtaposing the foreground up against those blues and purple blues in the background. It was a spot that was a little hard to, to get a clear view of the, the water and uh, so the trees have grown quite a bit over the years. Righty. So now it looks like I can start to start to refine areas and just check areas to see how I'm going but this light is coming from the right to the left so that's why we've got those shadows on the left hand side and they're quite important because even though we think light is a almighty powerful uh, being or uh, thing it's only half of it 50% is shadow 50% is light so I do like to think in terms of okay where's the light coming from and where's the light going to and it's the shadow that will describe that for us visually so just doing a few little checks there just making sure, because as most paintings go, they do get more and more technically difficult as we go on. That's why the stepping back, just having a few moments of nice and peace and quiet, so important. So I've got the half inch Eclipse brush. They're really marvelous when I need those sharp edges. But the good thing with them, they also are fairly sturdy and we can really sort of give the brush quite a good sort of push and they normally last me about three months and 
I'm pretty happy with that because once it's considered sort of worn out and losing enough hair, I'll still use it for sometimes foliage or grassed areas, areas that are a little random where you want sort of almost an abstract uh, brush mark and shape. So we can actually get a little bit more light, but I guess it's a little bit like the, the tennis player. They'll take four or five rackets onto the court and once they feel that the strings are going and loosening, they'll grab another racket. Thankfully, I, or maybe unfortunately, I can't afford new brushes every painting. But, um, but also, no, that's only joking because what we want to do is get used to the flex of the brush as well. And sometimes it's actually tricky to know when it's actually too worn. Normally I know when uh, the brush is worn, when I'll get to the end of the, the day and think to myself, boy, that was a hard day's work. I was really struggling with my painting today and I'll normally equate it back to that my brushes, it's normally the edge, the sharpness of the edge. That's what normally goes first because we're using the points quite, quite a bit. So now I'm bringing in the, the finer details. I'm dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's now. That's what I like to call the, the final little bit, just to, just to put those little enhancements in with this scene, it's the boats, it's the masts, it's uh, just all the little odds and ends. Sometimes, it, and it's not just the light values, it can be little darks that we're putting in as well with the smaller brush, but also just sharpening up all of the edges. That's what normally a big part of the final 10% is checking edges. Because we, if we've got all the right lights, darks, warms, coals, Composition's good, uh, our brushwork, say, is good, but we may just need to sharpen up those edges. So it looks like we're ready to sign off. It's getting to that stage. It's been a fun painting. Okay, folks, I think I've got the painting that I was after. Most of my little outdoor paintings are for bigger ideas back in the studio. So it's kind of the research and development stage. There's a few little difficulties with seeing what was down the bottom so it was kind of out of my um, view range, but I'm really pleased with uh, what I've got. All the best, hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.